One of the new features I am going to go over in Canvas is located in the calendar. Um, let me get into Canvas here. Um, up at the top of your menu, you have calendar items. Um, the new feature allows you the ability to customize your calendar course colors. And you'll see um, over here on the right, Canvas assigns arbitrary color codes to uh, the courses. If for some reason you feel like your calendar is too cluttered, you can actually turn on and off by clicking on the color box next to the course name. If you'd like to select a customized color for your course, you can go in and on the right, there's some dots and you can click the colors there. You can also enter a hex code color and a hex code is basically uh, one of 256 color combinations that are assigned, assigned for web safe colors and it can be six digits long. And I'll just show you an example really quick. So I'll type in a number and you'll notice that the box to the left of the number is actually changing colors. The next feature I'm going to talk about is in your global settings and it has to do with setting cell phone text messages that will, they will notify you when you have any kind of updates in Canvas such as announcements or due dates. You can go to this area by clicking either on your name or on settings. And over here on the right in ways to contact, you have the ability to add an email address or by clicking on add a contact method, you can put a cell phone number in. You just select the carrier for your cell phone company and it will come up with an email address depending on what kind of selection you pick here. And then you register your SMS. And all SMS is a short message service. Um, it allows text messages between mobile devices. For, um, droids work a little differently in that they uh, use push notifications. And push notifications are basically, you know, they happen even when um, the apps aren't open and will notify you that way. So over on the left, we're going to set up our notifications by clicking on notifications. And you're going to see two columns, one for email address and one for cell phone number. And this is great, especially if you want your students to be notified of announcements when you post them, you can let them know that they can enter an email address, their personal email address, or enter their cell phone number, and they can be notified of announcements and due dates. They can be notified right away, daily summary, or by a weekly summary, or you can turn off any notifications by clicking the X. And that's basically all about with the notifications. So now I'm going to pass this over to Rita. Thank you, Holly. Next, we'll talk about your your personal settings for uh, or your course settings. So we'll click on your course. On the left hand side at the bottom, we're going to click on settings. From here, we'll enter in a start and end date. Now this could be the start of the, the term that you're going to be teaching in, or you can open the course up a few days earlier or a week or two, depending on how soon you would want your students to receive the information. You do so by clicking on the calendar icon here. You'll click on the date you would like to open your course. You'll click on the time, and then you'll click on done. You repeat this process for the end date which as you can see here, we gave them the end date a little bit past um, when the semester ends, just to give students a little bit more time to uh, complete any, any last minute assignments or anything they needed to work on. Um, and you can also do this too, so they can come into the course and check grades and check their progress as well. After you select the start and end date, you want to click on this checkbox here this way, this will ensure that students will only be able to participate, which is turning in any kind of assignments, um, using discussion boards during these during your start and end dates only. Once you have this selected, you'll scroll down towards the bottom of this page, and you want to go under the visibility section and check restrict students from viewing course after end date, and also restrict them from viewing course before the start date. And this will, this will make the students um, not be able to enter into your course after the end date 
and it will also remove remove your course from their course list. This is a good way to still have your course um, be open to you to view and to use for the future, but this way the students won't have that on their list anymore, and they will not be able to access your course um, to either turn anything in or um, to check their grades. It, it, it just won't um, appear on their list. And while we're still here, I'm going to go ahead and click under more options to show you that there's some more options that you can click as well. As you can see, there are several options to choose from, but today we're just going to focus on disabling comments on announcements. So it's important to know by disabling comments on announcements that um, students will not be able to comment on them which if they do come in an announcement, it will show to the whole class. So you might want to consider using this option. Um, so this way, there's not a lot, a lot of uh, comments that are be happening on announcements. You might want to push that to um, possibly a discussion instead. And once you have all these settings complete, make sure you can, uh, click on the Update Course Details button. And that will save all the, all the um, settings that we just changed. Now we're going to go ahead and click on announcements so you can see what it looks like when you do disable announce, the comments on announcements. As you can see, there's a lock that appears near each announcement and that will let you know that it's locked for comments. Uh, and this way, nobody can comment on that announcement. Another new item is within the discussions. So we're going to move on to discussions next. And this is a like feature, which is similar to the like feature in Facebook. You would click on the discussion that you would like to open up for likes. We'll click on edit. And under the options section, in the settings, you would click allow liking. Now this will allow anybody within the course to like any post or any comment. They're, they give you two options. One of them is that only graders can like. So this would be um, yourself. And if you have any TAs in your course, you, you would be the only ones that, can, uh, that would be able to like a comment. But please keep in mind, that by doing so, everybody in the course will still see the number of likes that each post receives. You can also sort the likes or sort by likes. You can choose to sort discussion replies by the number of likes. This option, this option uh, sorts the replies within the discussion topic in descending order. And please know on this option, if you do select it, that nobody would be, no user would be able to rearrange the order unless you unlike or uncheck the sort by likes. Once you've completed this option, make sure you can you scroll all the way down to the bottom and save. Now I'll show you how it would look within the discussion itself. Right now, when you, you see this little like icon, and it's, it's grayed out, meaning nobody has, has liked it. If you click on it, it will appear blue, and it will show you the number of likes that comment received. Now, I will pass it along to Holly. Okay, thank you, Rita. Um, now, I am going to show you um, how you can set up an average scoring policy when setting up preferences for multiple attempt quizzes. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to select on the left quizzes. And if you create a quiz, you're going to hit this blue button at the top that says quiz. And when we scroll down a little bit, you're going to see where it says allow multiple attempts. Um, you may wonder why you would use something like multiple attempts on a quiz. Well, multiple attempt quizzes are usually low-weighted quizzes. Um, they test the students' knowledge for the course, on the course materials to make sure that the students understand those course materials. So now when we click on um, multiple attempts, and another thing to keep in mind is if you pull your questions, too, from a quiz bank, um, the quiz bank will randomize the questions 
And so then the students aren't taking the same quiz twice. So under allow multiple attempts, you'll see quiz score to keep. Along with the highest and the latest score, we now have the option to select the average score. And that will just average among the multiple quizzes that the student may take. And now I'm going to pass it off to Mike. Mike, what kind of new features do you have for us? I'm quickly going to go over differentiated assignments and how that affects um, well, things like honor courses. Um, so you can set up an assignment that only one student or one section has to do. So I'm going to get out of the quiz, cancel, go into assignments. Okay, and then um, I'm just going to click this week one paper example right now and look at this assignment. And you'll notice under edit, um, one of the new options for differentiated assignments is the assign to. Now, by default, this will go to everyone. But if you have different sections, um, you could choose by, by section. So if you had an honor section or if you had just um, multiple sections in one master course cell, you can actually go ahead and um, have an assignment that's due only to the one section or go ahead and, and do it by individual. And what will happen is in the grade book, the assignment will still show up on your grade book, but it will gray out anyone that has not been assigned and has not been assigned to. So if you only, when we stick with the honors example, if you only had an assignment for an honors section, everyone else in your course will be grayed out. Um, it's nice too because it also, um, every, if you do multiple, so you could also choose multiple, multiple sections or multiple people. So I can add a second one in here that goes to like a different section. So this assigned to would be the first section. The next one would be the a second section with a different date. Um, so you can kind of control different variables here. When you look at the calendar, you'll notice that each of the each of the assigned twos will have their own number. It'll state the the title of the assignment with the number next to it that will represent each of the assigned two variables that you have out. So you might have weekly paper number five with, a, a, with a, a number next to it, like for one, two, or three, depending on how many different times you did use to add and assign to. So that is new, but also a very needed feature. Um, while we're here, I want to go ahead and just mention, like, in the speed grader, there's now an auto save. So I'll cancel out of this. And just to let you know that in SpeedGrader now, um, whenever you make a comment, if you click to the next student, it'll now automatically save your comment. So that is a new feature, which is really nice. And then um, I'm just going to end up on files so we have enough time to go and do questions. But under files, you'll notice that there's a new feature. You have um, three states of um, you have three states of actually our files can have one of three states right now. So currently any file or any folder can be green, which is published, unpublished, which is gray. And you can see that here. I can publish or unpublish. Or you now have restricted access, which is a yellow lock. And what that does is if you restrict the, if you publish a file, everybody can see it. Um, everybody that if you enable files, everybody will be, be able to click on that, go into files and see that folder or file. If you make it unpublished, only the instructor or TA will be able to see it. Or with the new feature, you can actually just restrict it. And by restricting it, um, it, it hinges on two, two different variables, either by um, only with link, so I can restrict the files, but then put a link in the course to that file or link it somewhere on a content page and then students can see it, but not within files. Or I can use by date. So if I was to restrict this folder, you'll notice that I have hidden files will be available only with links, and that, that would be if I went to a content page and actually link any files in that folder, or if I did um, student availability and just scheduled a time. And that can be any time in the future or so I'll update, and you'll notice it's turning yellow. One last note um, before I, I end my part of the presentation. 
I just want to let everyone know that anonymous peer review has now been enabled, and so I won't cover this today, but I just want to let everybody know that there's now an option when you do peer review that um, the peer reviewers will show up, comments will show up as anonymous to the student. So that's now an option. So with that, I'd like to turn it back over to Connie. Thank you, Mike, and thank you, Holly and Rita. And um, as we're bringing up the, the final screen, I did want to call your attention to the chat box. For those of you who have it open, or if you'd like to open it, clicking on that chat link at the top of your page, Mike has posted a hexadecimal color chart. If you recall earlier, Holly discussed changing colors on the calendar. One easy way to look at custom colors is by going to that link, and you can select a color that way rather than having to know the six digits. It's called the hexadecimal code. It's what computers translate into colors. You don't have to know those, but if you have a nice chart like this, that's the way you can pick pick a color. I, I would like to uh, thank Rita, Mike, and Holly for presenting an informative and interesting presentation today, and thank you all for attending. I did say in the beginning that if you uh, wanted to view additional release features, we are providing a link for you to do that. We just covered a very select few, but in structure updates and this all the time. So there's always new things happening, new features coming out. The link that you see at the bottom of your screen, if you click on that, that will show you information about recent releases, information about upcoming releases, as well as a lot of additional information about Canvas. So um, thank you all for attending today. And I'd also like to mention that we have another webinar coming up on October 14th called Navigating the New ITS Service Portal that will be presented by ITS. And as always, you can check out our website for newly added webinars, new events, trainings, and all sorts of things at bgsu.edu slash CFE. So thank you all again for attending and have a wonderful rest of the afternoon and a wonderful Labor Day weekend.